So we've got now the draft, the joint, and from the joint back we've created the back part of the last. From the joint forward it's very different however. We've got the toes, they're flexible, they can move, and the back part of the last is firm. One way of describing it is all large animals, like the rhinoceros, like the elephant, like the horse, have hooves. In other words, they don't have toes, they've got massive, solid, column-like legs because of the massive weight of the animal that's being supported by them. On the other hand, a mouse has toes, has little flexible toes. So you look at a mouse, a cat, a rat, a, you know, a rabbit, they all have flexible toes. And the reason is, it's not just that an elephant is uh, 10 times, 20 times as tall as a rabbit, but it's also 20 times as wide and 20 times as long. So that's 20 times 20 times 20, which is... Um, uh, say thousand times as heavy, even though it's only twenty times as tall. So uh, a um, an elephant will have these massive hooves, and a little mouse will have claws. Human beings, because we've only got two legs, we're the only species that has both. So the one way you could say is we land and stand on a hoof, that is the tarsus, the rear part of the foot and then we flex our toes, we balance, and we take off with claws, which is like the mouse. So we've got a hoof at the back of the foot, and we have claws at the front of the foot. And uh, we like to call them toes and paint them pretty, but they have that same f flexible individual action that, um, that, that claws do, but they're toes. And um, so it's really necessary that the toes have room to move, not too much room, but they have flexibility and sensitivity of what's happening on the ground. This is something you can do if you go, say you go up into a stair and make sure there's a handrail there, and then put your heel, put your heel on the step with your toes hanging over, and close your eyes, just lightly touch the handrail, and, and then take your other foot off the ground and see how able you are to balance with the toes off the lip of the stair. You'll find it very difficult. On the other hand, you turn around, face the other way, so that your heel is off the stair tread, but your toes are on. Again, now, because you've got the sensitivity and the flexibility of the toes, you'll be able to very easily just balance on, on the one foot and, uh, you know, with your eyes closed, and again, don't forget to hold the handrail in case you fall. So you'll see that uh, you can stand for a long time on your rear foot, on your hoof, if you like, but you need the front, the toes, to balance and to sense the ground and to uh, help you balance. So from here forward, we've got a very different principle. Let's look under the last. From the joint back, we've got a very accurately done arch support. We said it's going to be four millimeters uh, of movement here, but otherwise it's conforming to the arch of the, of the last. This is very precisely holding the foot. The clip above it is making sure everything is supported firmly. From here forward, we've actually got a flat surface. You know, the toes of the uh, toes of the foot are not flat there, they're very dynamic, but what we've created is a flat surface for the toes to move on. We've also created a shape that's much longer than the foot. So this is a classic West, what we call the West End London toe shape and last shape. So this was made where I trained in Lobs and Fosters and uh, other firms like that. Uh, we'll make New and Lingwood, we'll make a last very similar to this. So generally speaking, for a man's last, it's three sizes, that's 25 millimeters longer than the foot. And for a lady's or a woman's last, it's two sizes, that is about 16 millimeters longer. I'm now going to trace the front of the last. It was made to fit. There we are. So let's look at what's happening. 
Here's the joint conforming with the joint that was measured on the tape. I've cut across the big toe ever so slightly, and you can bring the big toe in slightly without damaging it. And what that does is it gives you enormous scope for elegance. Now notice I have just skimmed the fifth toe. I mustn't press the fifth toe, but what I have done is I pulled in on the joint slightly. So by pulling in on the joint, I pull the toe in as well. So I know that by pulling in here and tightening, I'm making the foot feel very secure that this toe is also going to come in slightly, and therefore I won't be pinching the toe. You can pinch the foot slightly there, but you cannot pinch it there. So. We've now got this space in front, and as I say, that's about an inch longer than the foot, because I think this is a man's uh, last. And this is giving air and space, and you can see the toes can move in there. They're not being cramped. Uh, but more importantly, it's giving an elegance and a shape that makes the shoe distinctive. So there's a lot of designing that goes in. This is the place around the toe where uh, the last designer has full free range, you know, is not constrained purely by the anatomy. You can have a short stubby foot and, it, you know, it's then difficult to make a long slender last. Uh, or you can have a, a short, nar a long narrow foot and it's difficult to make a stubby last. But basically, from here forward, you have a lot of artistry, a lot of artisanship uh, available to you to create a beautiful shape. Supposing you want to make a trainer, for instance. Well, a trainer would only be, it would be round and it would only be slightly longer than the foot. If you wanted to do uh, here, what I've done is a shoe for a... Um, the toes the other way around. It's a shoe for a slip-on shoe, which doesn't have any uh, toe puff in it. So it's very soft leather here, so I can have the what's called the recede here, very, very flat. And because the shoe is very soft, moccasin, the toe just comes in and you wear it more like a sock. Um, here's the toe shape of a fell boot for climbing up uh, fells and mountains. You're going to be wearing very thick socks. It might have a steel toe cap on it for protection like in an industry. So look at how kind of bulky that uh, toe shape is compared with the West End shape. Another one that a lot of people like is the chisel shape. So the wall of the last is very square. The ridge comes along. The recede is very, you know, sharply down. So it really does look like the chisel that you'd be carving wood with. So you see all of these different shapes, you know, a kind of a lady's pointed last, uh, very much like the one we have, the fell boot and the moccasin all variations, all of which could be on the end of this last without actually changing the fitting. But, so it's very much to do with the style of the shoe that you want to make on it. It's very much to do with the culture of the uh, people that are wearing it, the, so the society that they're going in. Is it a very pointed uh, last? A lady asked me the other day, she said she just wanted her shoes car to bar. So my feet are terrible, but I want to have a lovely shoe. As long as I can get from the car and sit on the chair at the bar, I'm happy. And so, you know, we could make a really nice, long, pointed shape for her without worrying that she was going to go for walking five miles and cripple herself. Okay, so those are the principles of the, uh, of the toe shape. And the other thing that's really uh, good to know is that in plan or in outline, you think that's the toe shape, but it's not. It's the outline of the toe shape. Another thing that we have is, say, uh, let's get a piece of paper here, um, the profile. The profile uh, is um, where we actually trace, see, trace the uh, the last. So there's the profile of that last. Um, it's kind of like what the silhouette would be if we had a, had a, a, a strong light. 
Um, so the profile is that. So in a way, you could say the toe shape is the outline plus the profile. But again, it's much more subtle than that. It's this shape here is called the recede. And the recede isn't just the profile. It's the whole way that the 3D shape rises up. It's usually maximum over the end of the big toe, and then it recedes down. It's flatter over here. And you can spend a lot of time with little bits of sandpaper sanding it beautifully. The difference between a lovely elegant last with a beautiful recede and an elegant shape and, and an ugly bumpy thing that, you know, okay, they'll pay for the shoe, but they'll never come back again, is millimeters. Really, very, very subtle. And uh, you can spend a lot of time working from here forward to get that beautiful shape. And if you get it right, the customer will want to come back again and again because it just makes the shoe look elegant and wonderful. So that's the toe shape.